Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Apex Assassin here, guys. Now, in today's video, we're going to talk about the three playstyles for Rampart, which perks you should use for each style, and which guns I think would suit Rampart with said style. Now, if you want to see more Rampart, and if you want to see more of me, hit that subscribe button, because I do go live pretty often. I don't have a set schedule, so just hit that notification button, and you shall see me. But, nonetheless, let's get started. Now, I believe some of you new players that are hoping to play different characters try Rampart, see her minigun, and can't seem to use Sheila, or don't know how to use her amped cover. Plus, on top of that, all the characters have four perks and abilities to fight, learn, and adjust to mid-game. So, through following the three playstyles I'm going to talk about today, you can figure out whether or not you like Rampart. Now... Let's talk about the first one. The passive and positional rampart. Now, to talk about the first perk, it's very simple. You get the passive ability of the Assault Legends with the Bandolier perk, which lets you hold more ammo. But I understand that with this perk, you might not want to pick it as your first perk. So let me give you a couple of examples. Number one, having to carry more ammo is a plus when you don't have a backpack or a gray one, giving you more room for heals and throwables early game. Number two, having more ammo in general is a plus after this season's reworks of ammo. Energy ammo got a six bullet reduction, but light ammo got a 12 bullet addition to its stack. Also, when carrying three stacks of sniper ammo, it turns into two stacks, opening a slot for more heals or throwables. But before we move on to the next perk, I should talk about modded loader, Rampart's passive ability. She can simply reload all LMGs quickly and have more ammo. That changes when you get my personal favorite perk, Amped Reloads, giving you the ability to reload all weapons quickly. Also a very simple ability that you might say is weak. So let's give you a couple of examples as well. Number one, sniping is a slow process, especially if you're using the Sentinel, when you have to reload and charge the sniper. But with amped reloads, having to reload your gun quicker will help you get you to your next shot. Number two, some of the weapons have set reload speeds, whether or not you've used all of your ammo or not, like the Havoc, Nemesis, and the Wingman. So after learning all of these perks abilities and what they can do for you, time to get into circle. Hit that ring console, find your way to the first green circle, and let's set up your walls. But I rotated without picking up my walls, and I have 20 seconds for only one wall to recharge at a time. What's nice about setting up is that with all controller legends, not just Rampart, is that you can take down any non-damage tacticals from a distance so when you have to rotate and don't have time to take down all of your walls you can simply look at your wall and get them back as if you were right next to them this ability to take them down like in this example you can readjust your walls to help you in the next building but with ramparts tactical ability it is completely useless when not in use watson will shock you caustic will gas you up Catalyst will spike trap you, and all of these abilities can be used without someone being there. Just place them, and you don't really have to think about them. It's pretty convenient for them. So, you have to be ready to use each wall and change positions to take less damage and do more to the enemy instead. That's the key to the P passive and positional Rampart playstyle. Now, let's get into the weapons. For my top three weapons for this playstyle... They are the Sentinel, Flatline, and Nemesis, but also you have to have a secondary. So my top three for those are the Mozams, because they're double-cheeked up this season, Prowler for the amount of damage you can output in such a short range, and Volt for the consistency that you'll get out of the Volt, as in aiming and damage. So no, you don't have to use either of the weapons, but in this meta, you can use almost any weapon off drop, but when people start to acquire purple armor, almost all weapons start to become less powerful as the games go on. So choose carefully. All of this, and I still haven't touched Sheila. 
Just because I haven't said to you, Shigila, doesn't mean you shouldn't be ulting at all. With her new rework to Vantage's ult, she can now get her ult within 30 seconds of landing with 45 bullets. Now, admittingly, that's not a lot of ammo considering the first 5 bullets when shot spray like a shotgun. But with patience, practice, and accounting for that burst, fighting close with Sheila can turn the tide of a fight early game. But if you were to put Sheila into turret mode, you in instantly have a fully loaded Sheila ready to fight back if the enemy landed far instead of close. You have a 3 times scope with the turret mode, giving you a chance for a better knock. Like I've been saying, with these walls, perks, and weapons, you have a better chance at fighting for a longer period of time without looking for more loot with the bandolier perk and amped reloads to reload all weapons and Sheila faster after healing or knocking someone. So, if this playstyle doesn't suit you, let's move on. So, let's talk all about Sheila, your trump card. Ultimate cooldown is an amazing perk to get early game when all you want to do is destroy all doors, Newcastle shields and ultimate wall, Watson pylons, catalyst doors, horizon ults, revenant stupid ult, Valks trying to fly away or even people trying to evac away, having a gun that just shreds people for bunkering down and thinking they could just get away from you is an amazing feeling. So, instead of having the ability to ult within 30 seconds, now goes down to every 22 seconds for each section of the ultimate. So, pair your ultimate with the shield that gives you a 20% damage boost that no one can shoot you until they break the top cover and a gun that will shred you if you peek incorrectly. But Apex, I'm just gonna fly over your shield with my horizon lift. I'm going to swing around with my team so either one of us can kill you or out damage you. Ah, uh, yes, I forgot. Sometimes you guys actually work together, but sometimes I have a brain too. It's called preemptive measures. Thinking ahead before you start a fight is not that common, especially if you're just trying to fight. But when the fight is uneven, you start panicking and you can't seem to place your walls in a certain way or don't know if you can actually pull out Sheila fast enough and trust me you are a slow moving target for players that know movement but we have prep time prep time is something i actually don't see much of if not at all when i see the few ramparts play in apex since i started playing rampart it has been nothing but buffs after buffs for her to the point where she's not even the same legend anymore having the ability to put up walls faster and use mobile Sheila was not introduced when Rampart first came out. Now that Rampart has that, they just made her a walking juggernaut that can move faster and pull her ult out by 20%. Look, $20 is 20, I mean 20% is 20% if you fight at an aggressive pace, not relying too much on those walls. Starting to pull out your ult takes time that you might not have when someone else has a turbocharged Havoc. Yes, your gun will delete an ability and person when caught in a bad position, but that doesn't mean you should be in one too. It gets me out of sticky situations only because I was forced to or I made a mistake. So when you're being an aggressive rampart with your ult, have some sort of condition like them being in a bad position, waiting for that moment or forcing them into one by throwing a nade and reacting to that instead of a giant laser saying that I'm about to die. So, get out there, go crazy, put your walls up and destroy them with the minigun and have fun fighting them. Now, my top 3 guns for this playstyle are going to be the Havoc for the damage you can output with it at such close range, L-Star for the reverse hit fire plus the compatibility with Rampart and the R301. Now, that's kind of a wild card because it is a bit of a B-tier weapon for the amount of damage that it doesn't have right now. Behind Rampart's walls, now we're talking, right? So, for my top three secondary weapons for Rampart is going to be the Peacekeeper, Car, and Prowler. Pretty even guns, all guns that output damage very quickly. Now, let's get on to the final playstyle today. Teamwork. Huh? You thought you could just do this all by yourself now? You have teammates to help make up for your lack of damage? 
movement and positioning. So here are my tips to becoming a team player. Boo. <laughs> well, all I have been describing this entire video is how you can become a better Rampart, not an actual team player. You have to work together to win the game, not just get kills. Rampart, admittedly, can be overpowered by multiple enemies or abilities, but that's the key for this next style of Rampart. You don't have to rely on one side of Rampart's perks. You can have the Bandolier perk mixed with the Rampart ramped up perk to have more ammo for your weapons and have a stronger ult. Or you can have ult cooldown for early fights, but as a veteran of Rampart, I have the timing down to use Sheila without the ramped up perk and I can amplify my weapons instead, but have Sheila in my back pocket at all times, but as a third weapon, not my main one. And by mastering her abilities and perks, I can have ramped up to keep up with my movement horizon, and she can lift me to high ground to melt them on the way up, plus a better position. I could use amped reloads to snipe one, two, three enemies with advantage teaming. Having ult cooldown to get Sheila down for my teammate so we both can annoy enemies is a really good plus as well. Ramped up to be as aggressive as my Mad Maggie, she throws her ultimate to stun and speed boost the team for a swing with a gun that will just shred you and Mozams on a Maggie is overpowered too. Find legends that your friends or team will help you and if you have legends that don't combine very well, then, yes, go back to the other playstyles and fight with the abilities and guns that suit you. So remember, there is no I in Rampart.